This is the download from Sounds Profitable, your daily source for the essential news of the business of podcasting. Brought to you by Spreaker from iHeart. I'm Manuela Bedoya, in for Tom Webster. Here's what you need to know for today, Wednesday, September 13th. Inside Audio Marketing Reports, influencer spending forecasts to grow double digits this year. PQ Media has released their newest global marketing influencer forecast report. And signs show influencer marketing budgets are growing faster than traditional advertising or marketing spending. For 2022, PQ Media estimates 3.6% of total marketing spending in the U.S. went to influencers. Currently, the U.S. accounts for 76.1% of global influencer marketing spending, but PQ Media predicts that share will shrink slowly over the next four years. An example given of podcasting taking advantage of the rise of influencer marketing, as podcasting is influencer marketing after all, is iHeartMedia's Influencer Summit held this May. Next, an Axios exclusive, The Economist adds podcast subscription tier. The trend of major publications using paywall podcasts as a value add for premium site subscriptions has evolved slightly, as The Economist has now added a subscription tier just for access to their podcasts, titled Economist Podcast Plus. Current paid subscribers to The Economist will get access to the premium podcast benefits at no additional cost. But now new audience members can pay $4.90 a month to just access the podcast benefits including exclusive limited series. The Economist is one of the largest early adopters of podcasting, having launched their first show in 2006. Currently, audio is The Economist's fastest growing platform for audience growth, and executives aim to harness that momentum with the new subscription tier. From Digiday, an advertiser's guide to the Justice Department's case against Google's search empire. The Justice Department's antitrust lawsuit against Google has started this week, alleging the search company has violated federal law designed to prevent the formation of monopolies. The suit argues Google has de facto exclusivity as a prevailing search engine and can use that position to play favorites, with which companies get preferential placement in the search engine. While a government-enforced breakup of Google would change the landscape of marketing as we know it, This case will likely take weeks, if not years, to get as far as a prosecution proving Google has broken any antitrust laws. It's also worth noting the DOJ has not yet expressed their intended outcome if they were to win. Any outcome, positive or negative, will potentially take years to come into effect. The digital sky is not falling just yet. Finally, from the Ad Exchanger newsletter, Max is staying minimal. While the other major video streaming services are increasing the ad load of their ad-supported tiers, Warner Bros. Discovery is holding steady on Max, formerly HBO Max. Instead, the company has adopted the philosophy that any content that is still in production, such as the Game of Thrones prequel series House of the Dragon, will only have pre-roll ads with no mid-roll to interrupt flow. On content with pre-roll and mid-roll, Max averages two to three minutes of ads per hour of content. According to the Warner Brothers Discovery head of U.S. ad sales, having a scarce and premium inventory pool adds more value and impact for the advertisers than having larger ad pods. Be sure to check out the links to every article mentioned right in your podcast listening app or at soundsprofitable.com, where you can also subscribe to the newsletter version. The download is written and produced by Brian Barletta, Gavin Gaddis, and Tom Webster, and hosted on Art19. For Sounds Profitable, I'm Manuela Bedoya. Download us again tomorrow.